Good. Good. Calling uh, to order. This is the the meeting of the RMLD Board of Commissioners. It's being videotaped at RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street, Reading, Massachusetts. This meeting will be videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. And just a reading of the RMLD Board of Commissioners Code of Conduct. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair on items of official agenda as well as items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair and that all parties, including members of the RMLD Board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name, their address prior to speaking. It's the role of the chair to remain chair to contain, maintain order in all public comment and ensuing discussion. So with uh, our chairman, our official chairman not here right now, but we think he's in pursuit. Um, we're going to start with first opening re remarks. I think the opening remarks are we had our operating budget, which we discussed last night, and we're going to move the main part of today's meeting is to move to the capital uh, budget. And we have some other items to talk about as well. Now, I think at this point, we're going to welcome our chair back. <laughs> I was enjoying it. I was really enjoying it, Phil. But you can pass the gavel back to our chairman. Did you at least bang it hard? He did. No, he did. No, it, was a it, didn't, it didn't do a I wanted to show respect to you, so I. My ears are still ringing from last night. Two hours in traffic to get here tonight. Oh, ridiculous. It was worth it, though. I know it's worth it, but still, it's frustrating. All right, where are we? <laughs> We're just up here to uh, welcoming our CAB. Okay, very good. Welcome our CAB member. Okay, you want to say anything or? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Any words of wisdom? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> okay. If not, then uh, I don't see any liaisons, and we have nobody here for public comment. So let's move on to the capital budget. So, okay. Okay, Amid Jafari, our Director of Engineering and Operations, and myself are going to present the capital budget, uh, the second part of the full budget from last night, as Dave indicated, the operating budget, um, and then we'll take a vote or ask for a vote at the end of this presentation for the full budget. All right, very good. Amit, do you want to come up? Yeah, great, thank you. Yep. I'm going to stay, stay over here for, if I may. So can, can is they okay with the... I guess they can see it. Okay, as long as we're okay with the... Good evening, thank you so much for the opportunity to present uh, the capital budget for fiscal year 2018. Uh, this year we did it a little bit different. I figured that, you know, we'd like to know the projects that, you know, how we do with the status of projects that you are kind enough to give us authorization to spend that kind of money for system improvement. So, uh, so we're going to have a slide on that, and then we're going to move on to the recurring uh, uh, projects. And then I'm going to tell you what the new projects are based on the new study that we did with Booth and Associates, as well as the ones that you know, we feel uh, are important to manage. Uh, some water. Uh, some water. So, so the, the first one, this is the review of the FY17 projects uh, scheduled either to be completed or these projects are either completed, some of them, or they're to be completed by June 30th, uh, 2017. The first one, that's my favorite, distributed generation, that we budgeted for 2.7 million, and I guess we're gonna be living under the, you know, uh, under the budget for that, uh, due, to, uh, due to the competitive bidding. So that project is moving along. I mean, the generator is going to be delivered on June 1st, and we're going to start up the fire up the generator on July 1st. July 1st, I guess it's on the holiday, right? It's Saturday or so. So the week of the July 1st. Yep. The first week of July. So that's going to be uh, running and helping us to uh, get the credit on the capacity and transmission, and that's the reason we need it. The HVAC upgrade project, this is completed. Uh, the various upgrades at station four, 
Uh, by the way, the ones that you see in green, these are the ones that the Booth and Associates recommended for that 20-year planning study that we did. Mm -hmm. So that's why we figured out that you know, well, it, it's better to show them different colors so you see uh, what was recommended and what was done and what's being done <coughs> and what's being proposed. So various projects at Station 4, we needed this 35 kV potential transformers. The battery bank is replaced now. The relays are all upgraded. The relay and the scaling integration for bus A and A, they're all done. The only thing that left to do is for the 9 getaway replacement. This is the cable replacement in order to increase the capacity of the feeders. And that's being done right now. Right now, the, uh, the contractors are working on that. They're trying to create 2,800 feet of the cable and replace the aluminum with the copper to get more capacity out of that. Station 5, the LTC control replacement, we had a problem at that substation with the, the transformer LTC, that's all fixed. Uh, substation grounding equipment upgrade, it's all done. Uh, the station RTU, that's the communication device between station 3 and uh, the local uh, the, uh, control room or SCADA at the control room. And that's, being, that's installed now, the wiring, it, they're going through the process of wiring and programming. Uh, the analog devices cap bank upgrade, this is already done. We did that uh, a few months ago. The control center modifications, this is uh, in progress. So we just got codes for the control center, control room uh, upgrade and expansion. And uh, the project is going to start uh, in uh, June, the first week in June. And miscellaneous projects like fault indicators and voltage drop, the, the data recorders that are uh, like $1,000, and that one we already purchased that and we've already done that. So this is a list of the projects that uh, were uh, completed or to be completed uh, in FY17. The projects uh, continuing from FY17 that you voted for and we said that you know where we need to uh, also continue doing the open to, uh, to FY18. <coughs> Basically LED street lights. I'm glad to announce that approximately two thirds of the street lights were on schedule. They're all uh, uh, installed and upgraded. So the towns, they're going to start seeing the benefits and you know, the savings. Uh, each year, we committed to 2,450 lights to be replaced. And this is the second year. So by FY18, uh, July 1st, uh, we're going to be done with the project. So everything is going to come wow. to LED lights. <coughs> the GIS, this one is going really well. Uh, we have basically daily resources. They have. Uh, completed the uh, data uh, collection, and now we are going for uh, checking and you know, reviewing the work and the data that uh, they submitted. They, we are they're doing the integrity check, uh, which they're supposed to deliver the data with, to us with, with less than 2% uh, uh, inaccuracy, or 98%, over 98% accuracy, which is, so far it's going well, and our crews, they're doing that. The data. This project is going to be done, uh, basically completely done by uh, September or October 2017. Uh, nice. uh, we still got to have to do some work in 2018 uh, for that GIS upgrade and the data uh, integration. Uh, the integration part of that to other systems uh, is scheduled for FY18. Uh, the grid modernization. Phase one, uh, we're still going to be uh, installing more. We did a pilot program uh, last year. We installed four switches. And now this year, uh, we're going to be installing another set of four switches uh, to pro program. We've already started seeing the benefit of installing these and grid modernization, which all utilities basically across the state, they, 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 they go for in order to in increase the reliability, improve the reliability. And actually, we saw the benefit of that during the last storm that the feeder was picked up less than 10 seconds. And that was really good. It was a uh, yeah, good uh, uh, move. On that project. Uh, the new well making substation, uh, we are, we've been continuously searching for land. We've looked at three uh, locations, and one is kind of uh, promising. So, Colin and I, we've been uh, doing negotiations, and uh, today we checked with the town of Wilmington for one of the sites, and it looks like it's feasible. So we have two options, either purchasing the uh, land or we can uh, rent it or lease it for 99 years, <coughs> which both options are available. And uh, uh, 
we check with the with the uh, planning and zoning. It looks like the zoning would, would allow us to purchase that because we are the non-for-profit company and uh, for the benefit of the ratepayers. However, there are some uh, other issues with the land that we might have to go with the lease. So we got both options at our disposal. But that one is, you know, we've been going back and forth for almost a year, year and a half. The, yes, go ahead. Yeah, it, the, uh, it would be a frontage issue. So if you buy it, then if the company in that owns the land has a certain amount of frontage and then you take some of their frontage, that's a frontage problem. But if you lease it, they get to keep their frontage. So it, it, it would be a variance or whatever. So that would be why it would be different. Okay. We're, still, we're still gonna have to, because it's close to the wetland, we're still gonna have to go to get the permit and go to the conservation commission and we check with them today, it looks like we, we're going to be all right. If, if we lease the land, can that be part of the capital? Or is that a separate? Yeah. Or is that a question? Well, yeah. would, it become, would it become capital? Could we basically capitalize the lease and, and, inc and increase, our, increase the investment in the plan? Um, the, the actual assets in, would be increased. Is If the, the money spent in the leasing, I'll have to ask Wendy how that gets booked. Okay. It, it's a question. It's an open yeah. a question yeah. to be asked. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Because if you purchased it, it would definitely It'd definitely be part of it. Right. 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 But a 99-year lease is almost like buying. Well, right. that's it, but I mean, what, what the accounting the would, right. would, would <laughs> be, what the accounting would be like for that. Right. That's, that's question. the question. Very good question. It's just right. that in where you go with this. What? Uh, yes. Um, in that fur coating, there's land assets. So when you're leasing, it's not a land asset. Right. I don't know how it's booked, but we can get that answer from Wendy and let you know. Right. But if you purchase it, then it goes on that as an asset. Right. Right. Yes. Good. The next line item is pan switch switchgear upgrade. These are the 15 kV pan switch switchgears that we got about 25 of them. It's a six years program to replace so many a year. The first one is targeted to be upgraded. It's the river park in Wormington. And that's... Uh, that's the first one. This one is the only, believe it or not, the only project that uh, uh, it's kind of due to the late arrival of the switch gears. They were supposed to be delivered by mid-March. Now we just got the news from the factory that it's not going to be delivered until June, late June. So we might not make it. The rest of them, basically, all the projects, that 95% of the projects that we said we we're going to do last year, uh, they are either going to be completed or on the way to be completed. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Um, two questions. The the gas generator will be ready July 1. Wasn't it supposed to be ready June 1? June 1, June 1st, uh, the g engine is going to be delivered. But didn't wasn't the wasn't the target last year to have it up and running on June 1? You, the target for that was to have it by end of fiscal year, I guess. That's what we had. That's what we said we were going to do. So as long as we get the peak after July 1? After, as long so as we have the peak after July 1, we should be fine. So can we arrange to have the hot weather, weather <laughs> wait until <laughs> July? Unless you can hit the way it's going after 4 degrees <laughs> yeah. in June, mid-June. Unfortunately, that one, again, it was the uh, matter of the contract issue that we had with Milton Cat. Right. Performance bond and, you know, all the liabilities and here and there. So it took a little bit longer than, you know, we expected. And on the, on the grid... I just I was just wondering because I remembered it was supposed to be done earlier. Is the our transformer sensors? W those are a thing, right? That you can do, but we don't have those, right? Transformer sensor sensor failure sensor. sensors for transformers, sensors that help you detect, bef like give you a sense that they're about to fail before they do. For the transformers yeah. or for the su uh, for the generator? For the tra I'm switching to transformers now. Okay. I'm asking. The transformers they don't have any uh, sensors for failures. The only thing is that, you know, if... Uh, if a fault, fault detector yeah. or a feeder? Something that, that gives you a sense that something's changed and there's a voltage change that gives you a, an indicator that predictive it's starting. Some kind yeah. of predictive predictive maintenance, we've got the routine cyclic program for the substation. We annually check the oil, the, the DGA analysis, the, that's a dissolved gas analysis. Right. And that kind of tell us whether something has changed Are you talking not? about a piece of equipment that... That would help you... That would help you I'm, my understanding is that it exists, that it can, there's indicators of, of imminent or, or decline of transformer performance that gives you a sense that it might fail soon, and it you can send a truck out sooner than what, instead of waiting for it to fail. There are, I know which one you're talking about. These are the ones that you know you can 
purchase and put it mounted on your transformers. These are the fa like fault indicators. Right. And you know, but uh, these are very expensive, and uh, I'm not hearing too many good. You know, I, I don't work. Know if, you know, I, I don't know if yeah. you get more benefit from it from yeah. the program that we have. I'm only the asking. We have it's a standard pretty much. We're building a transformer load management, which you tie in all of your billing so you know what each transformer is loaded properly. Right. And if it's loaded properly, right. not overloaded or underloaded, You're it gonna. has a certain life cycle curve, and it's protected with a fuse. Right, right. So, I mean, they're, they're pretty passive once yep. you install them, unless it's a manufacturer defect, but we test them when we get here. So, um, but we, we, the switches are fault indicators and stuff we're putting in that would isolate and, and bring you know, close back in a circuit so we can just isolate an outage. I know we're doing more than used to be done. I yeah. know that for sure. Yeah, I'm asking because one of Just clarification, you're yeah. talking about the, the substation transformers no. or dis distribution transformers? The ones, the distribution transformers. Oh, I was talking about the uh, substation Sorry. transformer. I thought that's because we were talking about generators. The reason I'm asking is one blew up and, you know, there was... I mean, if it's good that nobody was out there, but not here. Oh no, that wasn't yeah. a transformer. No, it wasn't that a was transform. a lightning arrestor. It was a lightning. One seventy-one Washington Street. That's that's the one lightning one arrestor across. is supposed to prevent any yeah. damage. It's an arc shoot. Okay. Yeah. And what happened for this particular one is some of the polymer on it, you know, melted. Okay. And that doesn't happen all the time. It was right. kind of a. Have you ever had one, Jason? Happen? Uh, lightning arrestors fail. No, but I mean the polymer coming off of the. Like it just kind of melted. Yeah. Um, and a couple of those were usually like an animal contact. Like yeah. right at the mm. top of the arrestor if it wasn't animal protected. We had one not too long ago, the uh, squirrel right from the right from the arrestor to the switch and we had, we had to cut the arrestor clear up to replace it and it all melted. Yeah. Mm. So I mean it can occur mm. the fact that this one went and it dropped some polymer on someone's car. Okay. I'm only asking if there's there's yeah, but that's it. It's not a okay. transformer. It's that a is for the distribution arrestor. transformers. There are IFDs, internal fault detectors, yep. which basically works based on the gas. As you know, when the transformer heats up, it the gas. Well, he's talking about the lightning arrestor issue on 171 yeah. March. That's kind of what prompted my question. Whether there's more sensing we can do to detect things before they fail. Right. Good. Carry on. Yes. Great. So uh, back on switch gear, you know, that's, uh, that's going to arrive late June, so I don't think we're going to make it this year, so it's going to have to go to the, the next year for the river park. The station three relay upgrades and the state, uh, skating in integration. Uh, this one is being done right now, and we're making a good progress. There was a problem at this substation. When the substation was designed, unfortunately, they, they, had, they had some design flaws. The transformers were not uh, designed right. They were not the right type of transformer uh, because the fault current, the short circuit duty is too high. And uh, in the of the substation, I mean the transformers, they were not high enough to load the fault current for incident <coughs> energy to make it safe for the people when they do the switching in, a, in, in front of the, uh, the, the gear, switch gear. So we're fixing that. We have proposal in order to fix that, but the relays are also needed to be upgraded so we can bring more data from the substation back to the scale. So that's what this project is all about, and we're making good progress on that. Uh, miscellaneous uh, stuff like LED lighting of the two very ash street, uh, the carpet, and that's the electric vehicle supply uh, uh, equipment. These are the charging stations that we said we committed to towns. We're going to do one for each town. It's ten thousand dollars per year that we said we're going to install. That's what this money is for, basically. Uh, hmm. Combination of those. Uh, the new projects that we're proposing for FY18 is uh, Station Three reactors. I'm sorry yes. if I could ask just one question sure. on that. Uh, so, how much does a charging station typically cost? Is it what kind of range does electric car? Depends charge? on the construction. And technically, like for the parking lot, right outside over here, right. if with the grant money, there are some grants out there that we are applying for. Uh, if you're not dis uh, disturbing the, uh, you know, the parking lot, and if it's going to go on one of the parking spots, that should be between with the grant money, we should be do doing it with ten grand. Ten grand, and without the grant money, it's without the grant, probably talking about twenty. Twenty. Okay. Good. Thank 20, you. 000. Thanks. But if you start, you have to be increase the foundation here. There, it could go up to fifty thousand dollars, depending on the site and the sure. manipulations that you're going to have to do, modifications. 
to the pad or to the parking lot in order to accommodate that. So that's basically what we're talking about. So the station, yep. I'm sorry, you have any questions? Yeah. Only, yeah. only, I mean, are you anticipating just letting any member of the public just park and get free electricity, or what's the, what's the model there? So we're redoing the parking lot for a different flow. Yep. And we're hoping to put in a fast and slow charger yep. because different models have different abilities. And you can come in, you swipe your card, and you can... You pay. You have to pay. You pay, yeah, yeah. Is this a charge point, or you're paying us? They, you can't buy you can't buy electricity anywhere in our service territory right. unless you pay us. Right. Okay. Unless it's privately owned and that owner is paying the bill. Okay. It's all good. Green. No, no, no. I, oh, <laughs> I like this. <laughs> you have credit card. Right? That's one way. Yeah. Go ahead, Dave. Colin, are you saying nobody could resell our electricity in our town? Is that what you're saying? Right. This okay. is a franchise. There's okay. no. But, but there are some like um, companies that will put it in a vehicle charging station, and it's metered to them. They're paying for it. But could they charge customers for that? No. no. They can't resell no. our electricity. Okay. No. Yeah, I think analog, analog has one up there. there analog one? has one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, well, I'm so this is the project station three reactor as a part of the design flaw for that substation in order to lower the incident energy and arc energy. So we are installing, to compensate for the, the transformer impedance, we are installing these reactors, there are six reactors, three, uh, one, one set for each transformer in order to drop the incident energy and make it safer for, uh, for the safety aspect of that. So that's gonna cost uh, 561,000 and uh, we just had a bid, and actually you, you have a bid uh, that uh, you're going to be approving tonight because we decided there is long uh, lead, uh, this is only the item. So we just wanted to start the bidding process sooner, and we're going to be voting on it tonight so we can uh, start uh, the purchasing it, uh, hopefully after you know, July 1st. Uh, 35 kV underground cable upgrade, and these are the two lines that they are uh, feeding station five from station four, and we need to upgrade those. The underground cable, it's almost uh, 30 years old, so we're gonna have to upgrade those, and uh, one of those is gonna be done this year, and then it's a three-year project. We're gonna do, uh, you know, the other three. One was replaced, failed this year, so we have to do it. Uh, and then we, uh, we're going to replace uh, one uh, in the following year, uh, and then the, the following year after that, we're going to replace the other two. Wait, so excuse the, me, when, right. when the, if I may, when the underground cable fails, is it a catastrophic failure or is it sort of a gradual dying? Well, when they, they either fail or they don't, they, they, they're, they're good, <laughs> usually. That's what happens. These cables mostly they're in water, and small pinhole degradation right. of the, you know, the insulation could cause the failure, and usually that's what happens. These are all, they should be replaced long time ago, like 15 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. And they weren't replaced, and we're lucky that we got a life out of them as they, they are. But we got a redundancy at the substation. So if one line fails, automatically, the load of that transformer that is shut off or the, the power is out, is gonna be transferred to the other transformer. And so you, you probably the residents would see only 10 seconds, 10, 15 seconds outage for the bus transfer, but uh, that line still, you know, is gonna be out until we uh, right. upgrade the cable and fix the cable. Good, thank you. Any more questions? Good. All right, so a uh, coal mine upgrade in Woburn Street. The design for this project is under the, underway, and I'm hoping that, you know, we can get this started in the fall and uh, get it done and over with, because these are like the pole lines that, again, lots of uh, NESC violations. And the pole line is in terrible shape, like the one that you know you saw in Lowell Street. We did that last year. So this is another critical area. We've got three circuits on them, and we need to fix them. So we are getting that fixed. Which town is that? That's in Wilmington. Wilmington. Yes. Okay. The 115 kV transmission line upgrade. This is another one that you know this, these lines that are over 30, 40 years old, and the poles. We tested the, those poles. Some of them they failed. Uh, two of them I had to do them uh, as an emergency measure this year, uh, which we actually didn't forecast that and we didn't expect it to, uh, to uh, be failing so soon. So 
what happened is uh, that we upgraded to, we still got to upgrade six more lines. These are the ones that they're tapped off of the uh, Eversource line that feeding the substation. So that one is going to be done, uh, it's a two year project, we got two lines. One set of poles we're going to upgrade uh, in FY18, the other set we're going to do in FY19. And uh, that's a two year project. The pole replacement program, that's recurring because this, uh, as you know, we uh, test 10% uh, of uh, the poles in our jurisdiction area, which means the North Reading and half the Reading. Uh, we've got 6,400 poles. Every year we test 10% uh, uh, and 640 poles being tested every year. And depending on the results, the ones that they fail, we immediately replace them. That's why you see those double poles. And some of them, they're still up there that we try to get to them uh, as soon as we can. And some of them, they kind of marginally passed, and we are planning um, uh, upgrading those as, as we go. Every year, we do more and more of those. So uh, please, I'm asking our residents to be patient with us. I know if they're ugly. I, I don't want to see those in front of my house, but we do doing our due diligence and doing the best effort we can. We are very quick. We respond very quick for the transfers. But we don't have any, unfortunately, control over the Comcast and Verizon for uh, those transfers. And you know, we do the best we can trying to expedite the process. But that's why we have that engine program that you know, uh, the ball in the court. Everybody knows that you know when it's due uh, and when they're going to have to do it. Uh, so the secondary and main replacement. This was another surprise that we encountered last year that we saw neutral failures, again, due to the aging equipment. The neutral of uh, the services, they started failing, and we saw some you know, uh, troubling uh, issues. Uh, so we started uh, this program this year, and we figured for the next 10, 15 years, we're gonna replace so many, and we need the help of the contractors in order to do that. So Colin and I, we, we uh, sent a bail out, actually, that's the one that you know you uh, voted, uh, I guess, the last fourth meeting or the one before, maybe in April, right? April or March. It was voted to hire the contractors <coughs> in order to do that. <coughs> this is a very good program in order to you know, upgrade. By the way, this is also continuous. We don't wait for the contractors to, be, to do that. The contractor, they're gonna, uh, contractor is going to augment our staff. This is an ongoing program. We have dedicated crews that they're going around and they try to fix those, we, uh, we, have, we have the list of the oldest neighborhoods to the newest neighborhoods. And anything over 15 years or 20 years, they're all gonna be upgraded and you know, addressed. So we don't have this problem. Miscellaneous like the power washer, the remote skater room, uh, partial roof, the lobby installation, chairs, battery storage here, there, that's, you know, it's only a one year project and it's gonna cost, uh, we're asking for $230,000 in order to do those. So these are the, all the new projects. Annually budgeted and recurring projects, these are the ones that every year, no matter what, this is gonna happen for the next 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, but uh, uh, miscellaneous computer hardware software, 152,000 for FY17 committed, we're asking 340 for FY18. The rolling stock replacement, these are the tr trucks and vehicles, so 230,000. Security upgrades, uh, the AMI mesh network expansion, these are the Eaton mesh network for the new meters that we uh, started creating because we had, you know, the COP 500 that Vitron didn't have any solution for it. Uh, this system is a two-way mesh network, a very smart system. We can also use it for our distribution automation as well as uh, the metering, bring more metering data back in and integrate them with the Cogsdale and customer database. Uh, the communication equipment, smart grid fiber node expansion. We uh, this is this is a good asset for uh, RMLD that we bringing the uh, 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 substation information as well as we using the uh, smart grid devices to bring to communicate with them and bring those information back to the office. So that's being utilized. We're going to create more nodes. David, that's a good news. So more news. Uh, so we do is to uh, install more uh, fiber nodes and utilize them. 13 8 uh, upgrade, uh, the step down areas, we got uh, many of those uh, going, uh, going in, in two or four towns. 
These are the ones that we stepped on from 13,800 to 4160. The 4160 voltage is the old network. So we're trying to upgrade those. And as we're making those upgrades and reliability enhancements, uh, improvements throughout the neighborhoods, these are all going to be gone. So that's part of the project. And we're asking 325,000. I'm sorry, the, the 71,000 for next year. Each year we do a little bit. Underground facilities, this one is a big area, big concern to me. Because last year, and you're gonna see that, you know, uh, which neighborhood, uh, last year we had few areas that we did not expect such a failure, such a catastrophic failure. Again, due to the aging of the equipment. Mm -hmm. That was a locator drive in Wilmington. We just wanted to upgrade one transformer, replace one transformer, we ended up doing entire, you know, the neighborhood. About 10 or 15 transformers that we had to do. Because one after another, they were all same vintage, and it would have cost them more if you got to come back and do it more for utilization mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. the mobilization and demobilization. So we started upgrading those that it was not planned, but we had to do that as a part of the uh, project. The routine constructions, these are the ones that the list of them that you, you have for all upgrades, for transformer load management programs and things like that, that you know, every year we spend about one million. Last year, I forecasted one million. Unfortunately, we have to go 1.6 million because of the unf uh, unforecasted uh, the failures and you know, unpredicted <coughs> failures uh, that we had in multiple neighborhoods, like McDonald's Ave, you know, Locator Drive, and a uh, few other, Gandalf, Gandalf State. These are the all, that, you know, all neighborhoods that they needed attention. Mm -hmm. That's why we created this uh, uh, project in order to uh, catch up with those and hopefully you know, we don't see those failures. Uh, the new uh, customer service services, uh, that's uh, 140,000 we asked, uh, FY16, FY17, FY18, 156,000. And the miscellaneous purchases, the meters, metering equipment, transformers, and substation equipment that are going up a little bit. Again, that's because of this transformer load management and upgrades that we are doing. We are going through those like uh, nothing, you know. It's uh, every year we replace at least uh, between, 100, between 150 to 200 transformers. Uh, so, and these are the aging uh, transformers that we do to avoid uh, the oil leak or not necessary, you know. We're trying to catch up, but. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, uh, any qu questions? Question. Uh, I mean, could you uh, talk a little bit about what, what's inside the new customer services? Is that uh, office uh, layouts or is it? These are the, the new customer services. Uh, uh, I think that's for, that's for, for Jane, right? This is uh, something about. Uh, no, it's new customers. The new customers? Right, new customers. Like, uh, hooking up new customers. New, new services. Commercial, new oh, services. Oh, oh, services. oh, oh, I thought it was a new, internal new function. Users. New users. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Also, that's part of the IRD uh, PDR program. Mm -hmm. It's not part of that. It should really include that part. Mm -hmm. so. Great. So, in summary, uh, in FY17, we budgeted nine million four hundred six thousand. We are estimated to spend nine million six hundred ninety-five. So, we're going to be a little bit over. That the spillover is because of those uh, unpredicted failures that we have, and we have to fix those neighborhoods. We are planning for FY18 estimated spending five million six hundred eighty-six thousand dollars. So that's what we're asking. Yes, sir. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. So, uh, I mean, just a couple of questions. I don't remember from last right. budget. Uh, so, is there a formula that? the RMLD uses to come up with, uh, you know, a range of, you know, because obviously we can't spend, right. you know, 100% of the cap, but some, some companies tie it to, you know, depreciation or something. Is there some um, f formula that we use to? Okay. Um, if you go to page 16 on your tablets, see those calculations. that's your six-year, um, you know, plan. Everybody have page one? Mm -hmm. 16? So that's your six year plan capital that you saw last year. Um, I think Meg was just trying to condense it for you. Um, but you, can, you know, this is the full layout, and it's got the little tickler information on the right hand side. Yeah. If you keep going through that, at the end of that, so page 19. 
Where I you put find together this finish? little chart that goes at the bottom of your capital. You see it? Yep. Shows yep. the depreciation. Looks like this. Yep. Yep. Okay. And that so lines so up with all the columns above, right? Yeah. So if you look at FY17, uh, it says, you know, we're starting off plant and service 137,976, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's in thousands. And then your addition. So see the 9695, if you look up to the column above from the capital, 9695? Yep. And then your adjustments for retirements, and you go all the way down, accumulated reserve, net plant and service, maximum allowed return 8%. Yeah. Um, then it goes down to your depreciation fund, your beginning balance, yep. interest earned. Okay, so we have all of this maintenance and all these projects to do. And some people will say, oh, well, let's increase the depreciation rate. Let's let the DPE know we're going to go 4%. Well, our strategy is to keep it at 3%, and then we, instead of putting a uh, typical million or 1.5 million uh, from the operating fund at the end, we transferred $2.5 million in on FY18. So if you go to operating fund transfer, mm -hmm. a million, 1.5, then 2.5, then back to 1.5. And we use that money at the end to prevent us from having to go to bond. Right. Or prevent us from increasing depreciation expense from 3% to 4%. So that's, that, to my question, that's kind of the formula you use, you tie it to yes. depreciation. Right. Yeah. And so what you see here at the end, see the ending balance, 593, um, sorry, 767,000. Right. To me, that's a little bit low. Yes. But we are doing an awful lot of work. And then next year, you're ending at 600. Then you go back up to almost a million. Then you go back up to two million, and then in FY21 you're at four million. Now you're now you're back up where we're probably almost done with the bulk of this lack of maintenance, and now you're only going to spend what you're putting in. You put in four million, four and a half million. You spend four and a half million, and then we even out. But this has been quite a ride for the last three to five years to completely rebuild the system. I mean, this is. I don't know if you can tell from what Hamid's saying. The amount of yep. equipment and material and right. long short term planning is hu it's a huge amount yeah. of work. No, I, I was actually looking at it from a different perspective. So, uh, given all that, I guess I would have thought we would be spending at least the same in FY18, given because it sounds like there's still lots to be done. So, I mean, are we, I, I guess I'm asking really, is are we funding the CapEx budget sufficiently given that we have all these, uh, I mean, you mentioned just the example of 13, you're going in to do one transform and you have to do 13. You don't need too many of those surprises to... Well, it's so. starting to come down. The only yeah. reason why FY19 goes, see, we're at, we were at 10, then we came down to 9, now we're coming in at 7.6. Yeah. Now we're back up to 11, but that's the one year that we're going to be bonding for the substation. So 5.7 million, you see down the bottom right. of that, <coughs> is off of that. Mm -hmm. And you go down to 6, and right. you go down to 4.5, and now we're, we're almost even with what we're actually putting in for a depreciation expense, right. which is what we discussed yesterday. Right. Yeah. So and what drives the FY21 and 22 again? What it drives it, it, it just it's all the sheets above it in yeah. those So it's less, it's just less, the balance is much bigger because you've gone through a lot of your heavy plan projects. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. And every year we evaluate. I'm hoping that I don't have to keep the spending. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, if, if it stabilizes, yeah. hopefully you're not going to have the catastrophic yeah. failures that experienced last year. Right. Right. My last question was just around you, had, which is a good idea. Highlighted the uh, expen uh, capex expenses tied to the study. Yes. Uh, is there anything that the study recommended that for some reason we didn't get to or couldn't do? As or a matter of fact, we're going to see. We're going to give you a report on the. There are two recommendations. One is from Booth, from Booth and Associates based <coughs> on the study. The other one is the UPG that they did, they tested all the substations. And we do very good on those. Actually, we are ahead of the schedule yeah. on those. 
He said, is there anything we're not doing? No, we're not, there's nothing that- I mean, did it, so did Booth, did, did, yeah, no. there wasn't anything that Booth said, you absolutely should do this, and for some reason well, it didn't. Yes, there's some of them, some of the feeders that you know, uh, they recommended for yeah. replacing the cables with the 750, doubling up the cables, basically, for feeders. That's not gonna benefit us much. First of all, we don't have the duct knife in order to double up those, and plus, with the rating, derating the cables due to the heat uh, uh, index in the yeah. conduits, it's not going to buy us much. So yeah. the solution to that is, we said we're going to go alternate route, and that would be building a new substation in Ballotville area in Wilmington, and start transferring the load, some of the load from station four and station three, so those feeders, they're going to go within the normal range, and we don't have to double up those feeders. Yeah. So the money that we're going to spend to in order to double up the feeders, we rather to put it toward the new substations and transfer the load to that substation. So as essentially, yes, but there are a couple of alternatives yeah. where we're right. meeting the intent of the the recommendation. We're right. just doing it in a more efficient manner and in a, in a yeah. more of a holistic approach. Yeah, maybe, uh, Mr. Chair, maybe at a future meeting, certainly not tonight, <laughs> We might want to take a summarized, which I know you did before, yes. look at maybe both the studies or maybe one in one meeting. I yeah, just because I think it's good. Uh, we spent a lot of money and I, we did a lot of good work, so I think it would be a nice validation. We have that long yeah, spreadsheet with 20, 20, 30 recommendations. So yeah. all of those, and we have the list, which one is completed, which one right. is in progress, yeah. mm -hmm. and by the year, which year it was yeah. recommended to be done. Yes, we have that spreadsheet. Okay. We're more than happy to share that. Right. We want to cap. Okay. Maybe at our next meeting we can do that. Yeah. We're committed to do a present update quarterly, which we have done yeah. so yeah. far. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. There you go. Okay. We'll see. That. You're ahead of the schedule. Yeah. It's not what we plan to do. Okay. Great. Joe. Yeah. Go ahead. On um, project number 98, this is the office renovations. Could you t t talk a little bit more about what those consist of? Office, one second, 98. Yep. So in the right hand column, upgrade one carpet at 230 Ash Street, remodel accounting area, and replace broken office conference chairs. So that's how much? 200 and. No, yeah. that, that's. Uh, yeah. I find what page no, is it? I don't know. That was. Colleen, excuse me. Uh, what, page how, how, what page and how do you find out what page you're on? <laughs> And is it, are the pages shown here? I guess I'm not, I see page seven. 17, you got it, that's 17. Oh, um, should I know that 17? Yeah, yes, uh, look at the bottom. Number 98. Oh, you haven't got your thing. You just touch it. Right, you should touch it and it puts up, put the, you see? Yeah. There you, you go. go back yeah. The, uh, okay. Now I got it set. Uh, All right. Nope. Thank you for that tutorial. <laughs> Go down, please. My pleasure. Mm -hmm. Right there. Right Those there. dinosaurs stay together. Yeah. <laughs> so my qu the question, I guess, is about specifically the remodeling of the accounting area. Whether, just in light of the many discussions over that the building could get sold or could get repurposed, that I think it's good to do the chairs and so on for people's ergonomics. But whether we can. Do we really have to do a remodel for the it's building it's new walls? Really, um, um, it's a wall, yeah. is what it is, to keep people out of accounting because right. it's becoming a real problem. It's, there's confidential information in there, and right. we're just going <coughs> to put a wall up on the beginning. But it's, it's not that much money. We, we got the, um, the LED lighting. Yeah, the LED lighting. The uh, Project 104 is $100,000, and that is upgrade Ash Street and other RMLB facilities include the substation of LED fixtures. Um, you have, I don't know how many chairs we have in here, but we have How much is the, is the wall? The wall is like, I, I forget, I... Just the control room area? I guess about, oh, for the counting. For about 30000 I think it's about thirty. Four, because you have to move the sprinkler system, right. you're going to move the HVAC ducts. Right. Not one wall. It's not one wall. It's not <coughs> sure. I guess I, I guess if for all these 20 years we've managed to keep our books without building a new wall, I guess I question the need to build and remodel for accounting. Well, we're moving IT. Right now it's, it's accounting and IT in the same area. 
I mean, it's a huge building and it's an underutilized building with a lot of empty space in it. So I guess I feel like maybe we don't need to spend money on renovating the building. I mean, yes, on the keeping ergonomics and desks for that's important for people, but actually constructing new rooms or new partitions at 30,000. Uh, maybe I say this having just sat through a four hour town meeting where people tried to get 30,000 to keep the library open on Sundays. I know it's different, but you know, it's, it's the kind of thing where do we really need to do this? So can we back it out of the capital budget? Well, uh, I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, mm -hmm. and part of the reason I don't agree with it is because you have to, you do have to provide a good working conditions for people yep. and modern working conditions and the loss of one or two people because things are getting shabby and they don't like working here. Um, you know, the, the amount you'd spend on recruiting costs would right. more than cover mm -hmm. the cost of a wall. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about stopping not buying chairs and desks for people. It's just the it's just building a new room in this giant building. Well, That's I'm, all. Uh, maybe yeah. you could let me know where where it's underutilized that I could. What I need to do is I need to take a, yeah. I need to remove IT mm -hmm. so that it's only accounting. They have to, we have to have an area where we can discuss payroll and, right. and all of the things that have to do with, it, with employees' benefits and things like that, that you can't just have everyone walking around the hall and, and just stopping in. Right. It, it has to be semi-confidential area. I would be glad to put them someplace else in the building. Where, where do you feel is underutilized that I could? You know, them? I'm just questioning the need to invest in new partitions and new... I mean, also, I mean, that's part of the expansion room. of the control room. Yeah. Right? We are, as a part of our smart grid plan, we need to expand that room. Right. Monitors, they're going to be able to hold I, I don't think he's questioning the control I'm not room. I'm not questioning the control room. Talking about the wall and a door to keep people out of accounting. Yeah, yeah. You, need, you need to keep people out of the accounting, Amir. Also, I want to remind you that the only way we make money is we got to spend money. If we don't spend money in capital, we don't make the 8%. I see what you mean. We have to spend money to make money. We have to spend capital money to make the 8%. If you, if you want to devastate the 8%, cut back on the capital. I'm okay, I just, uh, you know, I mean, we're, here to, we're here to look at these things and ask yep. questions. No, so that's what I'm doing. I want 10 more generators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. We've had a significant amount of issues occur over the last one and a half to two right. years in three collective bargaining agreement units right. with trying to do all of that through accounting right. in an open space where everyone sits right. and walks. It's just been very, very difficult. And if there was another area that we could just right. enclose people yeah. with a door. Right. Um, and, and, and my feeling is this is a management decision. This is why we hire a general manager. This is not, this is not an area the board should decide. The general manager decides that this is what needs to be done. It's her department to run, and that we should, you know, I support what keep she's saying. Keep our mouth shut. <laughs> well, I don't think keep I our mouth shut, Mr. Chair. I have been trying really, really hard to right. not spend any money that, mm -hmm. you know, tripping on carpet, I have to replace it. Yeah. People hurting their backs on chairs that right. are 25 years old, I have to replace it. No I'm argument. I'm not even doing a full roof. I'm doing a partial Band-Aid. I mean, we've, uh, we've right. tried to keep to just the absolute things that, that we need um, to do. And believe me, there's been a lot of requests, and 90% of them have been. Right. Um, but the accounting one, I'm going to have to say, after actually watching what comes out of that room and, and how it's impacted the collective bargaining agreement, they need to be in a closed door. Right. Okay. Mr. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, that this happens, I think, all comments are correct, so I think it's appropriate as commissioners to question line items because that's what we're here for. Uh, the RMLD has some unique circumstances and situations relative to how we calculate profitability that Phil already articulated. I also think, you know, Colleen has responded that she needs it, so I think, you know, from my perspective, you know, uh, process has been served. I think Dave raised a, a valid question in terms of uh, understanding it. Colleen's charged with managing the operation. She feels it's necessary. So from uh, at least from my perspective, I would say good question, good answer, and that would be my perspective. Very good. 
Move on. Yep. You got more to present, or that's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, go ahead. Uh, I, I think we always ask you this question to me, but is there, are you comfortable? Uh, I guess it's for Colleen too. Is you know, I guess it's a tonight and last night question. You know, given the budget operating in capex, do we feel comfortable that there's enough monies being uh, approved tonight to run the the railroad, as we say, <laughs> the electric uh, utility? Yes. Uh, yeah. Other than you know what I mentioned to you, I mean, typically I'm not as comfortable with allowing the depreciation fund to go below a million, but I think. You know, I think we've been doing a good job balancing it and staying yeah. out of the bonding um, and, you know, saving that for the substation purchase and doing the best we can. And, you know, we're, it looks like we're out of the woods within another year and a half. Um, and we're, not, we're up to the level of maintain. And mm -hmm. that's where we wanted to go. And I, I will tell you, when you hired me, I didn't think we were going to be able to do that. But with the in-house sure. training, and you know, me doing a great job on efficiency of selecting contractors to help us. Um, you know, we're 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 getting it done um, for a lot less money than I think would it would have cost. Um, so. Good. Okay, sounds good. sounds like good. We need good. help. We need more you know, employees. Like that's what you know. Colin and I are trying to hire engineers. So to cut down the dependency of the consultants, yeah. and, you know, so we, and we are doing that. We are continuously searching for really quality people. Okay. Okay. Very good. Very we have good. another member of the uh, public and CAB here. Okay. Yeah. Daniel. Daniel. Come on in. Come on in. Do you want to? Do you want to come up and speak? I mean, just come right up to the microphone. If you would, please. Did you want to also comment, Neil? You're just you here want, to. Do you want to comment on anything? I mean, no. Why, okay. Or just here to observe? Okay. Very good. <laughs> uh, no, not tonight for our board meeting, unless you were the CAB representative and then we got two of you. Oh, yeah. No problem. No, 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 no. We're happy to have you. Yeah. <laughs> we were pretty happy to have you. This guy was late from traffic. You're going to get a reputation with the cab of being Mr. Late. <laughs> right. I think I'm going to uh, head home. I think my daughter just came back from college. So All right. Very good. good. good uh, choice. Check, on your, check on your investment. Yeah. Thank you for coming. <laughs> anyway. Thanks, Neil. All right. That was interesting. Okay. All right. Um, Good. If there are no more questions, then I will entertain a motion to approve the capital budget. If somebody wants to make the motion. Yeah, I think it's assistant chair. Sure. Yep. So the motion is the RMLD Board of Commissioners approved the fiscal year 2018 capital budget dated March 31st, 2017, in the amount of $7,695,715 as presented, and then at the end was on the recommendation of the general manager, which is added at the end. Sorry. Second. I'm having difficulty seeing Mr. Potter. David, you're not. Yeah. They had to have oh, trouble. Sorry. Yeah. I'm all set now. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. We're good. Okay. Was that seconded? Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Who would made the motion? Who made the motion? Uh, Dave was going to, but I think he did. Right. So you can't yeah. second it. Okay. You can't second your own motion. Second. Right? <laughs> okay. All right. Any further comments? Uh, is this appropriate? We did have a, a letter, I believe, from the CAB relative to their review and approval of the budget. I don't know if that right, needs to yes, be. Yes, it would be mentioned. I, I want to see if there's any comments from the other commission. Oh, okay. Nope. Yes. And then the CAB did recommend that yes. this be adopted. Yes. Okay. Very good. Any further discussion? If none, no. please raise your right hand. Opposed? That motion carries 5 0. Move on to the operating budget. Uh, do I have a motion under the operating budget? Motion. Yep. Okay. Is that seconded? Mr. Chair. Second. So the motion is to the RMLD Board of Commissioners approve the fiscal year 2018 operating budget dated March 31st, 2017 with a net income of $4,114,622 as presented on the recommendation of the general manager. Uh, Mr. Did Chair, before you form formalize the yes. vote, you, when does the comment happen? Now. <laughs> 
if I may, just just to put on the record that before the meeting, I, I circulated a memo just recommending that we look at bringing on somebody who, on staff who would have telecom expertise. One of our 80 employees, if one has telecom expertise, could help us down the road in a number of areas, internal uh, with our towns, in exploring uh, how to leverage our fiber optic network, helping us with our leases, helping us with future 5G wireless, um, and all the things we've talked about. So I just wanted to put on the record that I'd sent that around. Um, and, you know, I don't expect that you're going to would change the budget at this late hour, but I think it's something we should be considering and how to bring this expertise into the department in a more systematic way. Right, and I, and I think a lot of that, w I, I'm hoping that much of that will be coming out of the special committee that we had right, appointed right. Uh, last night. Right. And um, you know, every incremental piece of mm -hmm. revenue and profitability that we can find, I think we certainly should explore right. and put what and give the department whatever resources which are um, appropriate and legal and can be covered um, by the uh, by the business opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I would support. Mr. Mr. Chair, uh, this is meant not specifically just at uh, Dave's comment, but I'm assuming uh, in the course of uh, operations, if Colleen, with input support from the board, would have determined that a unbudgeted position was critical to the success of the operation during that fiscal year, there's discretion and we're approving a we've discussed line items but we're approving the budget in total I would assume that there's always in every budget uh, unfilled positions I would assume that'd be the uh, because we don't have a particular position in the budget doesn't preclude it from being if it's cost justified and approved and considered to be important to the budget does that sound right I mean right now we have engineering positions open in job description yeah. it talks about fiber because we own yeah. fiber um, it, having a job description that talks more about marketing of fiber um, and that we do not have that um, if things were to change and I was directed to do that we would have to create a job description we would have to run it through the union we would have to create another set of books maybe an LLC I'm not sure and we would have to split and go into a different direction um, yeah, I was I was really raising. I, I was just sort of speaking about the process, you know, at, at the highest level. Whether when we vote in a budget, are we saying, you know, we're going to have X number of headcount, we're going to add X, or at the end of the day, we're really providing a budget that supports those. But in the course, of, I, I was really thinking even more fundamentally: uh, are, are you able to say uh, we need this position because the work has changed and we're going to swap this for that or is that not as simplistic as I've described it? Okay. We have to have a strategic um, plan that you approve yep. and if we're going in that direction then I would have to take certain steps to do that yep. and then there would be a vote as to whether or not you want to hire people to establish that. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But right now, under what we're doing now, we, we will have limited telecommunications people that handle our fiber network right now and work with yeah. people like Phoenix and stuff for installations and that type of thing, but not anyone that's familiar with the marketing of it or the, the types of products that are offered. Okay. Which, which kind of leads me to another segue. Um, I would like us to maybe go back into another strategic meeting. Uh, before before we get into the summer, which means sometime in June, to have a strategic meeting to move forward on, on Dave's issue, and there are several others that I can think of, too, right. that we should address in a strategic mm -hmm. meeting. So I think uh, that's a good idea. Um, Tracy, can you kind of circulate yeah. and see what, if, what people date, what dates are available? Yeah, Phil, um, Ch yeah. Chair, I'd like to say, too, I, I really think we want to take a step forward in the fiber. I'd love to see us right. move move down the road a little bit and mm -hmm. I think it's part of the future we see our revenues going down kilowatt mm -hmm. hours going this is one area that we can actually get growth so I'm fully supportive of that right. as well right so I think we need to schedule some sort of strategic meeting in the month of June so let's circulate some dates and let's, let's move forward yep. on that uh, okay all right all right very good further discussion on the operating budget again I want to note the CAB did approve did recommend that we, we uh, adopt this uh, budget Yes. Okay, very good. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed? That motion carries. All right. Do we still have another bid that's out there? Yes. It was um, it's the one so from yesterday. 
Right. So you want to give us who's going, you're going to make the presentation on this? I mean, either. Yeah. yeah. Do you want should Dave read the motions for you? Since what? you're the chair, should what? Dave, as the yes, vice chair, read the motions for you? Is that helpful? It doesn't make any difference. Okay. As long as somebody moves it, I can read it. Yeah, this bid is uh, IFB 2017-40 for current limiting reactors at substation 3. Basically, this is the problem that we said we have uh, the, the design flaw at station 3 in order to lower the incident energy for switching and safe uh, operation of the breakers inside the substation. So we needed to do add this project. Uh, I guess we had a total of uh, nine uh, bidders for this. And we expected that, to be honest with you, first they gave us a quote around $250,000 for both sets, uh, but it came out lower. Wesco was the lowest responsible, responsive bidder for $145,440. So <coughs> it came out about $110,000 less than what we expected. For. So, and that's <coughs> one of the projects that you just voted on for FY18. Uh, so if you, because yes. Sure. How ahead. many how many responsive bids did you get? We got two. Wesco and Graybar. And that's all we, that, those are the two. I just like to make sure that because sometimes we only get one and then and I'm concerned when we only end up with one. Um, they advertise. They advertise yeah, I know. all over in the central mm -hmm. But if people get knocked out from it didn't happen here, but when people get knocked out with mm -hmm. technicalities then mm -hmm. that's all. Do we hear a motion? Uh, I, I would give a motion, but I'm not quite sure how to read it. Yeah, so the motion is move the proposal 2017-40 for current limited reactors at substation 3 be awarded to Westco for $145,440 pursuant to um, Mass General Laws Chapter 164, subsection 56D on the recommendation of general manager. So moved. Second? Second. Second. Seconded. Discussion? I see none. All in favor, raise your right hand. Opposed? That motion carries 5 0. Thank you. All right, very good. Yep. So, do we have anything else for uh, general discussion? Anybody have anything tonight at this point? I don't think so. We got the meetings for we June got the and July. For, right, the June, and then we'll see. June 15th, is that Yeah, June 15th is going to be the regular session. We'll see what people the availability for the strategic uh, meeting will be. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Do we have anything in the executive session we need to go into tonight? No. no. Okay. But if you'd like to walk by account, then I can just show you what we're going to do. That's fine. Okay. Um, Tracy, I am. I will review the minutes for tonight and tomorrow and last night. But in the future, anybody who's to sign the payroll that month, the, who will whoever's what is it? We, each month is a different person to sign the payroll or the accounts payable. Like, which? Um, usually, it's the accounts payable. But All right. So whoever signs the accounts payable will be the secretary for that month. Okay. Okay. Oh. So we're not going to talk about it. Anymore. Right. We're going to have to talk so about we'll it. Okay. That makes we'll sense. Mm -hmm. That's good. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That good. All right. Very good. Okay. Do I have a motion? That's an sign? executive order. I assume. That's an executive order. Yes. yes. You want me to sign that? <laughs> okay. Use your vote. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is that seconded? Second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Opposed? That motion carried. We're adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Okay. Thank you.